Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Client Spotlight Series. I am here with Anne Nguyen, and I'm going to have her introduce herself to all of you. Hello, everybody watching this. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Anne, and I'm a women's sexual empowerment coach and a leadership coach also, in a way, <laughs> who is a one-on-one -on -one client of Sam's. Yay. <laughs> And I'm really excited to feature Anne today because she has a really fun journey that she's been through over the last four months of working together, or maybe has it been five months now, somewhere in that range. But let's just start off with giving some context where you were when you were thinking about getting coach or hiring a new coach and how are you feeling, what specific things were happening in your business that you were seeking for help, support in. Yeah. So when I was in the season of looking for support, I had had my first six figure year and it was really exciting. And I could feel that, you know, more growth was on the horizon. I think when you kind of hit your first six figure year, you're like, okay. And I was very adamant about like blasting past and like getting to 300 or 500, but I mean, besides the money, I think I was also in a point where I was in my programs and I wanted more people in there, like not from a place of just, I want to make more money, but I can feel that my capacity as a teacher and a space holder after the years that I've put in to hone my craft feels like it can hold more, it can hold larger. And so for me, the word really was scale and scale to me really meant I want to be able to serve a larger volume of people because I can feel genuinely that I can hold them now. And so when I was looking for someone to support me, I was thinking that, you know, in order to scale, in order to grow in that capacity, I needed someone who could help me with things like systems and teams so that I, I really value not burning myself out. I really value building my business on pleasure. I really value, you know, having a really light schedule. And so I wanted a magician human who could help me really build that vision of serving more people while knowing all of the back end things to make sure that I didn't like burn myself out in the process. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I'm remembering another thing that was important to you was around opening up other channels beyond social media too. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's a really good one. So I started my business really scrappy and, you know, it was mainly on Instagram and built a following there and really learned how to make content there. But I could feel like the churn of Instagram and how fast it was. And I have known in the back of my mind for a long time that I wanted to build my business wisely. And so I was really thinking about things like email. I was thinking things about things like YouTube that have longevity, that actually have search, that actually have all of that. And I wanted to be able to kind of have that CEO mind of, yeah, sinking into building, yeah, the, a really strong foundation as well as that structure to be able to hold the more that it was feeling like my business wanted to hold. Mm -hmm. I love that. And what would you say your biggest reluctance was around investing if you had any? I think that my biggest reluctance was that those were the things that weren't necessarily like the sexy, shiny objects. You know, I think that a lot of my investments before have been around sort of more a hit of excitement or like, oh my God, like energy or, you know, it was sort of from that I guess it was more like a maiden type of energy that was like, ooh, okay, yeah. Uh. And this felt like a very grounded, very like wise, very foundational energy. And I also wanted to grow in my own wisdom and my own sensation. And so I wouldn't say that it was a reluctance, but it felt different because it wasn't coming from an urgency. It wasn't coming from a grasping. It was coming from the wiser part of me that was like, build a foundation, like do this the right way. 
And actually, as I'm talking about it, some of the things we were chatting a little bit before this interview actually started, I'm like, oh my God, we are doing that. It might not be the exact way that I thought it was going to happen, but like, we're, we're really doing that together. So yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you this later, but I'm a, it's, it's in the flow. You are a coach yourself and you teach people. So I know you've had this experience with your clients that they come, they come to you with a certain agenda in mind of what they they think is going to happen and like a plan for the next six months, which I think is important, like having a vision and like having a, like a direction you're going in. But in the, over the last few months, like we, in a lot of ways, didn't go in that direction at all. Of course, we were building systems and, and building your support, but quite a few things that you were like, were on your list. We just completely didn't address at all. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, was, how was that for you? And how, how was that actually super powerful? Yeah. I mean, I think that, so just to give everyone else context, like the first couple of weeks of our coaching, I was like, Sam, this is a year. It's going to be my, like, my medium goal is 300 K. My stretch goal is 500 K. And like, that's the energy that I was coming in with. And I appreciated you because you, you match me and where I genuinely am like in that moment and you hold the space for the change. And so we built an entire plan of like, okay, here's like what we can do. Right. And there were a lot of really powerful conversations that happened there, but what really happened was that I started to feel all of the ways that my different offers or my own self-concept or my own view of my clients or my work weren't fully in alignment of my zone of genius. And that came in the way of painful lessons, which you did such a brilliant job of holding me through. And it also came by way of, instead of going 300, 500, it was like, let everything sort of like, not everything, but let whatever wasn't in alignment drop and like rest and listen. And the reason why I say it's so interesting, because I think we're building a foundation, even if it isn't the systems foundation, or if it isn't the programs foundation, I mean, I'm in the creation of program right now. I think what actually happened was you held me so beautifully through a period of rest and reflection and didn't push me. And I'll just have to say, like, to anyone watching this, like, that was such an unexpected part of the journey. And as a coach, I always hold that room for mystery with my clients. I think any good coach, like, knows that. And so I try to be a good client in the same way where I'm like, this isn't what I what I necessarily thought it was going to be ABC, but here's a ride that I'm going on. And what impressed me the most about our coaching was that when that pivoted, you completely pivoted with me. And I think what really emerged was your ability to hold not just the systems and the like, okay, let's make a plan side, but the like, I'm a human, like going through like a really hard shedding of identity time. And I think every entrepreneur listening can relate to that, right? And that really, really, really impressed me because I put my business on a, on a rest mode on a fall, like winter season, probably more so than I ever have in my business. And especially coming off of a six figure year, that's when you're like, wait, what? This is happening. But just for context for anyone watching, you know, I think that actually what's emerging out of it is the actual foundation of who I am as a leader, what it is that I really want to teach, what actually feels like, oh my God, like the biggest gift for me to teach is emerging. And so although the foundation isn't the systems or like, let's build it for scale, it's actually, can I build me for that? And like for the long term. And so, yeah, I mean, that's why I signed up for a second round with you because <laughs> I was like, it might not be the, the exact monetary or the thing that I set out for, but it's something so much deeper and so much richer and something I know is going to set me up for success even more so in the long term for like the rest of my career to have this lesson. Well, what's really interesting to me <laughs> is like, we're just at the end of Q1 of 2022. So like, we're only done with one quarter of the year and like, you're already given up <laughs> the, entire, the entire year. 
year goal. I'm like, I haven't given up on it. I like totally see the, like, there's no reason why you can't reach those goals. And yeah. of course, like secondary to, to your energy, to living in alignment with your values, to living in it, like all of these other things. And those are of course more important, but like, there's literally no reason. And you're you like the way you've set up your business and the launch model and the audience building and the value that you give, there's literally no reason. So it's just so interesting to hear you're like framing it. Like you've already, like, it's like December, 2022. We didn't I do know. it. I haven't, no, I haven't let go of it at all, but I think that the shift for me has been that sort of ruled me and that was like an emergency energy or just not the energy that really, that brought out my survival mode, right? That brought out kind of like the hustle that it took to build my business And now I'm chilling because I'm like, oh, doing what I'm doing now, like getting into alignment, building this energetic foundation or this leadership foundation. Yeah, I have no doubt in my mind too. Like we can absolutely do that. (laughs) So I have not let it go at all, but it's just a completely different energy of relating to it where like this feels like the juice and then like that feels like the bonus sort of goal that happens at the end that I'm fully available for. <laughs> well, I think it's important to you, especially because the the way that you coach your your business clients is is around building a business that feels really good is in integrity you have so much extra time and if you were to commit to the money goal more so than you living the life that you truly wanted to be living when you create like went into entrepreneurship it it would have fucked over your business right Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely and I think that's why everything inside of me was like nope we're gonna go in this direction and this is actually it's almost like, you know, the spirit of my business or just, you know, the universe was like, okay, you're still going to get to where you want to go, but it's going to be like a completely different way that you thought you were going to get there. And I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Well, it's also really interesting because I, I come from like a launch manager background. I did that for years for online businesses and some businesses, they would launch like twice a year and all of their money would come from those big launches. So it's actually fairly common for some businesses to have like zero, 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 or like minimal or just payment plans coming in. So it's just, I, I, I always find it interesting to look outside of our little small industry and realize there's so many different ways to be successful in business. But anyways, I didn't mean to <laughs> go down there. What are some other big shifts that you felt like came through in our last few months together? I feel like that's the biggest one. I mean, we had a couple of conversations about team as well and just really taking responsibility myself as a leader for setting the pace, setting the tone. Like we had conversations where you're like, yes, and you have to give your, give your team feedback and you have to actually like set very clear expectations and communicate. And what I really appreciate about our coaching was not, not only that you, you know, coach that with me one-on-one, but you're very generous in terms of, you know, offering to send things over to my team, um, like literal, like loom video showing like the back end of a system that you have. And it was just so, yeah, that was really incredible. And so I feel like my team has been more efficient in, in that sense. I mean, oh, we've also worked so much in terms of my enrollment call process. So for people who are watching this, I am in my like two and a half, third year of entrepreneurship. And what I'm noticing just as I give these reflections is like, I feel like it's, it's like a, for me at least, it's like a shift developmentally from like, the very beginning of entrepreneurship where it's like you're just experimenting you're trying everything and it feels like there's just like a shift into a a different energy once you're like kind of like okay I can do it and so I feel like what I've been learning through our coaching is like what got me from the very beginning to where I was when we started is like 
is going to be different from what gets me to where I am right now to my next level, right? And so I think even in the process of talking about my own enrollment calls, we've really been talking about like, okay, you learned all of these things before and they worked before and that was great, but now how can we mix more of me into it and what I've learned and my what my unique way is and what actually is the way that I prefer to do it. And there are just a couple of just shifts that we had around that. Like you were asking, what are my biggest values for my business, right? It's fun. Like it feels like a ceremony. You're like, okay, then your enrollment call should be fun and playful and, you know, focused on pleasure and desire and they should feel like a ceremony. And I was like, wow, okay. That's, <laughs> you know, why didn't I think of that before? So I think that was a big one. And then, you know, even during the season, you know, I've experienced kind of more rejection in, in my business than I have ever before. And to be able to move through that and to be held through that is also a really big shift. I think that getting the no's from people experiencing rejection, whether, you know, it's real or made up in one's head, <laughs> It's such a big part that I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't talk about, don't share about, you know, you see everybody sharing their wins. You know, I do want to name that being able to be held around like my own rejection wounds and everything like that, I feel like has been a really big shift as well. And I think that's just, the, you know, the emotional, the just the energetic, the like who you are as, as a human being part that is in the background of a lot of businesses that a lot of people don't see and that I think is honestly one of the biggest values to me of coaching obviously <laughs> so yeah I love that you're bringing this up because one of the one of the big shifts from going beyond the six-figure point is opening up to a larger audience because a lot of times in that the first couple of years we're going off of referral or within our own network or friends of a friend or from a different from a mentor and like people in their audience so there it's a it's a much it's a much cozier environment but as you because one of your focuses was putting out a lot more marketing in the first month or two so you were yeah. you were reaching more and more people and there's a larger reach and more engagement you got a ton of sales calls but yeah you're attracting different people and what it's yeah. interesting what we open ourselves up to as we actually expand out so yeah so. yeah I will say to everyone else too I did also have the most sales calls that I've ever had set up because of the volume of what I was putting out and mm -hmm. so yeah I think it was a great lesson too again even as we're talking and reflecting and it's like oh, you wanted the foundation. You wanted to be able to scale. It's like, well, I reached way more people. I had way more sales calls. And then I think again, that was one of the lessons that was like, okay, well then if you're going to open up the channels, if you're going to open up to receive more, what do I need to refine within me to be able to hold that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So good. What do you feel like was the, the most surprising element of our work together? Yeah, I think I already touched. I mean, I think I was saying, I feel like you're a Swiss army knife of a coach. Like, I think you being able to flex in so many different areas from team to systems to, you know, we literally sat down and busted out a bunch of like messaging and copywriting stuff for an idea that I had. And, and then I think especially to like the emotional pieces, I think with any coach, I mean, I'll, I, whatever, I'm just going to be honest. I think that when I first signed up with you, my perception of you was that you were so good at systems and you were so good at like that side of business. And I was not expecting how good you are on the other side as well. And I think just with any coach, sort of that first moment of like, when you show up on a call and you're like, I am actually so tender. I like can't even pretend to have my stuff together <laughs> right now. <clears throat> and that that happened. And just the way that you were able to like really support me, I think emotionally, like human and and not just like CEO and or leader and or coach and or, you know, that type of stuff was really, I think, just like a, a glowing bonus um, and something that surprised me in terms of like, 
just how much it helped. And I think that opening that up allowed me to like go even deeper into this big shift that I'm in around my identity and around my work and all of that. And so, yeah, I would say that that is like one of the biggest bonuses. <laughs> well, it's funny. Like, I feel like, cause you, you've said this to me before of like, oh, I had no idea. And I was like, oh shit, I guess I need to like actually talk about the level of shadow work and emotional alchemy training I've done. Cause well, I don't ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I mean, that is what made me trust you too, because I, I knew that you had done it on yourself. And that gave me a certain level of trust because I'm, I'm such an emotional being. Like I am that part first for sure. And, and like as a client. And so I, that did make me like trust you and know that you knew like all the stuff I'd be talking about, but for you to like guide me through processes was when I was like, oh, like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. Oh, uh, what is it? You sell people what they, they want, you give them what they need. Yeah. So, so good for that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Anne. This is, as always, I love, love talking with you and I love how vulnerable and open you are. Do you have any final comments or messages for people who are listening or thinking about working with me? Anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I say do it. I think honestly, you've gone above and beyond in so many ways. I have felt so, so supported. And, you know, I just signed up to work with you for a second round because the depth of what we were able to do is really changing things in a foundational way. And I'm excited for us to do another one because I think we're going to have even more things to celebrate. Yeah, but definitely, like, if you are wanting to work with someone who can hold and be with all different aspects of your business and you and your human self and your CEO self and all of those things. Like, don't even, you know, don't even hesitate. Sam is amazing. Oh, thank you, Anne. (laughs) Thank you, everyone. We love you.